Hey guys, good night. Um, I'm Alex. This is my vlog. This is my second vlog, so I'm still getting used to this. Um, and I wanted to take this opportunity to state three questions that drive me completely nuts um, and what my answers are to them. Uh, the questions are where am I? This, okay, over here. Uh, what is a transsexual? What are your genitals? And uh, the wonderful, how do you have sex? <laughs> now, because I find those questions annoying, and because I don't think anyone is actually entitled to those answers, I'm going to actually uh, ask and answer a question lurking behind all three of those, which is, what is sex? Uh, humans think of sex as procreation between a male and a female. That's one of the things that sex can be. Uh, I hope I don't have to tell you that sex is often uh, done when there's no chance of reproduction. <laughs> Likewise, reproduction can happen um, when there's no chance of sex, in the sense we're familiar with it, or any sense at all. Um, some species reproduce by splitting apart, in which case it's, uh, or copying themselves, or, um, well, let's stick with those two. In those two circumstances, there's no meaningful way to say that they have a sex. They're just all individuals. Uh, or they could even produce offspring without fertilization, in which case they're generally what we would say are female sexed. Um, because they have to uh, uh, make eggs or... Yeah, that makes sense, right? Okay, so evolutionarily, sex, as we're familiar with it, is a way life... Um, can form that chooses one side of a bargain. Um, the bargain is basically this. You can reproduce a lot faster if you don't need any help from individuals. <laughs> I feel like there's um, some really good masturbation jokes in there, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let them go, sadly. Um, but when you do that, you rely on mutation for your genetic um, variability which is not always the most awesome thing to rely on. Um, whereas when you have contribution from two individuals into the genetic makeup of a new individual, um, there's a higher chance that they will be able to um, withstand or adapt um, some kind of change in their environment or some kind of threat to the species. I think that makes sense too. Um, well, only two individuals will contribute to the formation of a new individual. That doesn't mean life necessitated two sexes. Many species have more than two sexes. Um, there's a species of lizard. This is the one that's the, the has the most, I think. As far as I, as far as I know, I think this one's the, the top. Um, it's called, uh, there's a lovely name too, the side blotched lizard. Uh, sounds a bit like me in high school. Um, which has not just two or even four sexes, but actually five. Um, but of course you'll say, well, yes, that's all fine and good, Alex, but what about humans? Humans clearly only have two sexes. Well, what I just established for us was that reproduction doesn't necessarily entail binary sex roles. That's it. Male and female aren't eternal, essential features of the natural world. They're just forms that we're familiar with within our kind of life. They're two, basically, they're two common roles individuals can take on to contribute material to reproduction. That's it. This leads us to an important realization, which is that rather than being a manifestation of some perfect essence um, or the incarnation of some kind of platonic ideal, um, our bodies are historically contingent. A whole bunch of material steps had to happen to form what we'd identify as a sex. That's it. In the womb, all humans begin with amorphous sexual organs that only differentiate if a bunch of physiological processes go a certain way. Uh, this process extends far out of the womb into our lived experience. Um, but there's a remarkable conservation, physically, of the tissue that will become what we think of as only male or female. Um, both the male and female arrangements of gonadal tissue, uh, that's any of the tissue that's basically involved in making babies, I guess you would say, or having orgasms, which is its more popular function, 
Um, it all comes from the same genes, the same fetal tissue, and variations on the same cocktail of hormones. Um, at this point, I want to address the binary cis-sexuals. Cis I don't say that word out loud very often in the audience. Um, if you're a male, I'd like you to take a second to look at your balls. You'll notice a scar roughly down the middle of them. That scar is where your labia, yep, your labia, fuse together. If you're a female, uh, I really hope I don't have to tell you where to find your clitoris, um, which is a homologue of the head of the penis. Um, if you go through the genital structure feature by feature, you can see that each is limited by what it can borrow from its so-called opposite. Um, to give a crude analogy, um, there's no different or new ingredients present in either sex, they're just present at different ratios. And ratios can be a lot more complicated than one half. Um, thankfully, none of that is relevant for how I or anyone has sex. Um, how you have sex with that tissue um, doesn't depend on what that tissue is classified as at all. It depends on how you feel inside that tissue. And how you feel inside it could be totally different when it's around this or that person, um, this or that room, or this or that mood that you're in. You don't need to have rules that universally apply to all bodies in all spaces at all times. The only body you have to articulate the control of is your own. So stop asking me those questions, and please start asking, asking yourself, what is the sexual, what are your genitals, and how do you have sex? Ask yourself those questions. And then we can talk about what our answers are between the two of us. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll see you again soon <laughs> when I think of another, when I think of another uh, vlogging topic. All right, thanks guys, bye.